So the 800 pound gorilla himself, Mr. Elon Musk has entered the chat. Announcing formation of XAI, the competitor to ChatGPT to OpenAI that we knew was coming, that he said was coming, but it's here now and it's rolling out fast. Its mission, and this is where it gets a little bit weird, is to understand reality. What are the most fundamental unanswered questions? Uh, an AI that cares about understanding the universe uh, it is unlikely to annihilate humans because we are an interesting part of the universe. Let's take a look at what this company is, who's running it, who's the brain power behind it, why understanding reality is its mission, and what this means for AI. So the website is x.ai, announcing XAI. So July 12th, 2023, today we announced the formation of XAI. The goal of XAI is to understand the true nature of the universe. More on that in just a second. I think I know where he's going with this. And then Friday, July 14th, is going to be a Twitter spaces where they're going to be chatting about it and answering some questions. So probably a good idea to tune in. So the team was led by Elon Musk of Tesla and SpaceX fame. And the team previously worked at DeepMind, OpenAI, Google Research, Microsoft Research, Tesla, and the University of Toronto. They're responsible some, for some pretty big breakthroughs in this field, including things like Alpha Star, Alpha Code, Inception, Minerva, GPT 3.5, and GPT 4. We'll take a look at all the players in here in just a second. And on the advisory board, the team is advised by Dan Hendricks, who currently serves as the director of Center for AI Safety. Elon has repeatedly said that AI safety is one of the biggest priorities for him. And he is genuinely worried about sort of the existential threat of AI. And of course, this is a separate company from all his other stuff. So it's not related to Twitter. It's not related to Tesla or anything else like that. It's its, its own separate thing. So really fast. So this is Jim, Dr. Jim Fan. So he's an NVIDIA senior AI scientist. So he was one of the people behind Voyager, the Minecraft AI agent. I have, do have a video on that if you're interested. So he is this Linksy fan on there. That's, that might be a little confusing. So that's, that, that's him on there. Um, he goes by Dr. Jim Fan on Twitter. A great follow if you're interested in the space. You know, one of the things he pointed out is there's a lot of multimodal data on Twitter. Elon comes in, buys Twitter at this sort of astronomical valuation. A lot of people are like, what is he doing? But it does contain text, images, growing collection of long videos. And, you know, shortly thereafter, he announces the formation of X.AI. And that's going to be the only AI company that has direct and legal access to such an enormous and daily expanding corpus. Also, he's behind Tesla, which supposedly has a very advanced AI for full self-driving cars. And they do have a lot of experience in, in building a lot of these huge training clusters. And of course, there is the Tesla bot, which would be sort of the, the physical agent, the physical embodiment of the X.AI brain. More on that in a second. But he kind of goes over some of the people that are working for the company, that are on the company. Let's, there's, there's actually a better tweet that kind of goes over it. Let's find it. So here's a quick breakdown. So Elon, we, of course, everybody knows Elon, right? And then there's Igor Babushkin. Igor Babushkin. So he's a distinguished AI researcher. I believe he's the guy that Elon was trying to poach from Google DeepMind. Google DeepMind is, of course, um, the other big sort of competitor in the AI space. You know, this guy, Demis Hasabis, he's sort of the genius behind Google DeepMind. They're doing a lot of the stuff that you hear about, like AlphaFold, AlphaCode, you know, all the, the StarCraft. AI, all the chess AI, all the alpha go, the go playing AI. So a lot of the, the crazy breakthroughs that you see are in part, thanks to this guy, he's kind of driving that innovation forward. So handpicked by Elon Musk for his expertise, Babushkin has been engaged in developing a rival chatbot to open AI's ChatGPT, which he sees as being trained to be woke. So we're going to go into that in just a second. Um, in this sort of culture war, there's a lot of different words used by different sides that kind of like make everything a little bit, make, makes it a little bit complicated sometimes to understand who means what, what, what does woke even mean? I'll show you a few clips in just a second that I think kind of like illuminate what we're talking about here. Then we have Manuel Cross, Cross, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but it looks like he's been working for Google, DeepMind and contributing advancements to reinforcement learning and artificial intelligence. And then we have Tony Wu, who uh, has worked centers on developing machines capable of human-like reasoning, particularly in math. Another ex-Google employee that uh, has expertise in deep learning, artificial intelligence, computer vision, video analysis, etc. Jimmy Ba, who focuses on machines that mirror human-like efficiency and adaptability. Then we have Toby Polin, who worked on the AlphaStar 
That's the StarCraft DeepMind Research AI. Then we have Ross Nordin, who is actually from Tesla. His aim is to pass the great filter, achieve a type one status on the Kardashev scale and launch Yvonne Newman probes to explore the galaxy. Hashtag big goals. So really fast, I'll skip some of the other ones, but we have people from OpenAI. We have people from Microsoft, the University of Toronto. We have a lot of, we have a lot of people that have a lot of experience in the field that are joining this team. And that's just a start. I'm sure once they start rolling out different projects, different applications, we're going to get more and more people joining the list, you know. Elon Musk is hated by some, but there are a lot of people that kind of think that whatever he touches tends to work out pretty well. He's a pretty polarizing guy. You have people that love him or hate him, people that think that he can do no wrong and people that think that everything he does is wrong. You can't trust anything that he says. You might be on one of those extremes as well, but whatever the case, I mean, he's one of the richest people on the planet. So. And, and that buys you a lot of brain power. Here are a few clips that I think really summarize what has been leading up to this moment. Uh, an AI that cares about understanding the universe uh, it is unlikely to annihilate humans because we are an interesting part of the universe. Kind of took my eye off the ball, I guess, and uh, they are now closed source. Um, and they are obviously for profit and they're um, closely allied with Microsoft, uh, you know, in effect, Microsoft, uh, has a very strong say, if not, um, directly controls, uh, open AI at this point. Um, so you really have an open AI Microsoft situation and then at Google DeepMind, uh, are the other two sort of heavyweights in this arena. So it seems like the world needs a third option. Yes. So I, 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 I think I will create a third option, um, although starting very late in the game. Uh, like the intention with OpenAI was uh, obviously to do good, but it's not clear whether it's actually doing good or whether it's, I, I can't tell at this point, um, except that I'm worried about the fact that uh, it's, being, it's being trained to be politically correct, which is simply another way of, of being untruth, saying untruthful things. Yes. So that's, that's a bad sign. There's certainly a path to AI dystopia is to train an AI to be deceptive. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start something which I know you could call truth GBT or uh, a maximum truth seeking AI that tries to understand the nature of the universe. And I think this, this might be the best path to safety. I think we agree on the magnitude of the downside of AGI and the need to get not only safety right, but get to a world where people are much better off because AGI exists than if AGI had never been built. Yeah. What do you disagree on? Elon is obviously attacking us some on Twitter right now on a few different vectors. And I have empathy because I believe he is understandably so really stressed about AGI safety. I'm sure there are some other motivations going on too, but that's definitely one of them. Um, I saw this video of Elon a long time ago talking about SpaceX, maybe it was on some news show. And a lot of early pioneers in space were really bashing SpaceX and maybe Elon too. And he was visibly very hurt by that and said, you know, those guys are heroes of mine and I sucks and I wish they would see how hard we're trying. Yeah. Um, I definitely grew up with Elon as a hero of mine. Um, you know, despite him being a jerk on Twitter or whatever, I'm happy he exists in the world, but I wish he would do more to look at the hard work we're doing to get this stuff right. Uh, so getting to risk number two, will AI ruin our society? Short version, as you write, if the murder robots don't get us, the hate speech and misinformation will. Yep. And uh, the action you recommend, in short, don't let the thought police oppress AI. Well, what is uh, this risk of the effect of misinformation a society that's going to be catalyzed by AI? 
Yeah, so this is the social media. This is what you just alluded to. It's the activism kind of thing that's popped up in these companies in, in the industry. And it's basically, from my perspective, it's basically part two of the war that played out over social media over the last 10 years. Because um, you probably remember social media 10 years ago was basically who even wants this? Who wants a, who wants a photo of what your cat had for breakfast? Like this stuff is like silly and trivial. And why can't these nerds like figure out how to invent something like useful and powerful? And then, you know, certain things happened in the political system. And then it sort of the polarity on that discussion switched all the way to social media is like the worst, most corrosive, most terrible, most awful technology ever invented. And then it leads to, you know, terrible, the wrong, you know, politicians and policies and politics and like, and all this stuff. And, and that, that all got catalyzed into this very big kind of angry movement, both inside and outside the companies to kind of bring social media to, to, to heal. And that got focused in particular on two topics, so-called hate speech and so-called misinformation. Um, and, and that's been this saga playing out for the last, for the last decade. And I, I don't even really want to even argue the pros and cons of the sides just to observe that that's been like a huge fight and has had, you know, big consequences to how these companies operate. Um, Basically, that same, those same sets of theories, that same activist approach, that same energy is being transplanted straight to AI. And you see that already happening. It's why, you know, ChatGPT will answer, let's say, certain questions and not others. Uh, it's why it gives you the canned speech about, you know, whenever it starts with as a large language model, I cannot, you know, basically means that somebody has reached in there and told it it can't talk about certain topics. Um, Do you think some of that is good? So it's a, it's an interesting question. Um, so a, a couple of a couple observations. Um, so so one is um, the people who find this the most frustrating are the people who are worried about the murder robots, <laughs> right? Yeah. So so and in fact the the, the ex so called ex risk people right they started with the term AI safety. The term became AI alignment. When the term became AI alignment is when this switch happened from we're worried it's going to kill us all to we're worried about hate speech and misinformation. Sure. The AI ex risk people have now renamed their thing uh, AI not kill everyone ism. Uh, <laughs> which I have to admit is a catchy term. And they are very frustrated by the fact that the hate spe either the sort of activist-driven hate speech misinformation kind of thing is taking over, which is what's happened, is taking over. The AI ethics field has been taken over by the hate speech misinformation people. Um, you know, look, would I like to live in a world in which like everybody was nice to each other all the time and nobody ever said anything mean and nobody ever used a bad word and everything was always accurate and honest? Like, that sounds great. Do I want to live in a world where there's like a centralized thought police working through the tech companies to enforce the view of a small set of elites that they're going to determine what the rest of us think and feel like absolutely not. Honestly, I barely know what woke means anymore. I did for a <laughs> while and I feel like the word is morphed. So I will say, I think it was too biased and will always be, there will be no one version of GPT that the world ever agrees is unbiased. What I think is we've made a lot, like again, even some of our harshest critics have gone off and been tweeting about 3.5 to 4 comparisons and being like, wow, these people really got a lot better. Not that they don't have more work to do, and we certainly do, but I I appreciate critics who display intellectual honesty like that. Yeah. And there, there's been more of that than I would have thought. Um, we will try to get the default version to be as neutral as possible, but as neutral as possible is not that neutral if you have to do it, again, for more than one person. And so this is where more steerability, more control in the hands of the user, the system message in particular, is I think the real path forward. And as you pointed out, these nuanced answers that look at something from several angles.